Okay, so today I'm going to show you how to reset the parental lock on your Xbox 360. We are going to need to do a little bit of soldering in order to read the NAND, but after that it's pretty straightforward, so follow along and I'll show you how to get this removed. So you can see here if I come over to settings and go down to family, it's asking me for a passcode. Now I bought this console second hand, um, it was sold as parental locked. But I'd like to remove it so I can play whatever games I want and if I decide to resell the console, you know, I can't sell it with a lock on it. So we need to disassemble the console to access the NAND headers. And we're also going to need a flasher such as the Pico Flasher, X Flasher, NAND X or JR Programmer. If you have a Trinity console like mine, then you can follow the guide. We're also going to need a copy of JRunner in order to read the NAND. So without further ado, I'm going to get this console disassembled, hook up the NAND wires. Okay, so here we are. I have the NAND headers underneath the microscope, and I'm going to show you how to solder them. I have my soldering iron heated up to 360 degrees. Um, if you're a beginner then you might want to put this a little bit lower but if you like to solder quickly then you can put this up a little bit so you can see these are the points that we're going to solder to these ones here um, and they look a little bit dirty so what we can do is get a microfiber scratch pen and just come over here and scratch these up and what it's going to do is just expose that top layer that we want and this is going to make the solder adhere better to the points as well. So those are mine all cleaned up. And also if there's any dust, then I recommend just brushing that away. Or you can use a bit of isopropyl. Just be very careful about putting isopropyl on the motherboard before you solder, as it is highly flammable. So what I'm going to do is get some flux and apply it to these top four. This one here on the left, and these two. And now we're going to pre-tin them. Pre-tinning simply just means putting some solder on each of the points so that it's easier to connect wires to. So I'm going to come in with my soldering iron here and my solder. And I'm going to just simply melt the flux. And I'm going to hold my tip on the point and just feed the solder in and you can see there we're making little blobs of solder right here so we want to make sure that these aren't bridging bridging is for example making these two touch and join up because we could get a short circuit okay now we move on to this one and this one right here and this one down here now this one on the left might require a bit more heat because it is a ground point and then let's come over to these two so it's one two three and then one two here we are and here we are Okay, so now on screen you're going to see a diagram of where we connect the NAND wires. So I'm going to get mine out. And you can see here mine have little kind of DuPont ends, but yours probably will just be standard wire, which is okay. So make sure the end of your wire is nice and clean. You can trim them back a little bit if you want some fresh wire. So following the diagram, we can see that brown is in the top left so I'm gonna get my brown wire here and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna heat up this ball of solder I made push the wire in and then there it's simply just gonna solidify and that is a solid connection we're gonna do the same with black here just like this there we are. And with orange. So orange is this point here. And then I'm going to do 
ground first, which is yellow. You can see there that took a lot more heat to melt than the others did. There we are, and then red is this one here. There we are, and then on this column, J2C3, blue is on the left, and green is on the right. So what just happened there was a bridge when they came together. And here again, green on the right. And that is our cables all connected. You want to make sure, again, none of these are bridging. You want to make sure that there's not too much wire exposed if you're using wire. And that even little strands just aren't touching other things on the motherboard because that can cause shorts and that could cause an issue where we can't read the NAND or even result in permanent damage to the console. So now that's all done, we need to read the NAND with JRunner. Okay, so over here on JRunner, what we want to do is make sure where it says NAND reads, this needs to be set to 2. And I'm going to click this little question mark button. And you can see here, it says console not found. Now why is that? The console needs standby power, but while the flusher is connected, you definitely don't want to turn the console on. So what I do is I remove the ring of light board, that front USB type module, to make sure that the power button just isn't connected and therefore can't be accidentally turned on. So now that that is connected up to power, we can click the question mark again. And you can see here it's given us a flash config and says Jasper Trinity 16 megabyte. What it says here is your motherboard type and 16 megabyte is the size of your NAND. You might have a NAND which is 256, 512. I know some NANDs are four gigabyte. Um, so you don't really need to pay much attention to this though. So making sure NAND reads is on two, we're gonna click read NAND. And this is going to give us two NAND backups from the console. We do two NAND reads to make sure that there's no interruption. Say if one NAND backup was bad, then you'd have no backup. But if we have two, we can also compare the checksums on both of them and make sure that both are a good read. If your console isn't detected, then 99% of the time it is just a soldering problem. Your soldering's not good enough, you need more practice or maybe there's a bridging point. It's also important to note that it should say X Flasher SPI or Pico Flasher right here where your Flasher logo is. So you can see there NAND dump one reads successful and now it's doing NAND dump two. Okay, so the NAND reads are done and what we're looking for is the part where it says NANDs are the same and that indicates a good read, so that's perfect. So once we have the NAND reads, we're gonna go up here to NAND and we wanna click on SMC Config Editor. Now down here, you can see reset code, LLDX, and also here, the reset code, it tells you here which buttons you need to press in order to reset your parental lock. Now this is different on all consoles, so what I'm going to do is just pull out my phone and I'm just going to take a picture of this, or you can take a screenshot, and that's it, that's all we needed from JRunner. So now we can close this, remove the NAND wires and we can reassemble the console and once that's done we will go over to the console and i'll show you how to reset it so removing these wires is very simple if you put them on you can take them off so we're going to unplug power from the console unplug the flasher from the console and now all we're going to do is bring our iron and simply touch it on the metal and just pull on the wire a little bit and they're just going to come off very quickly. Just like this. And there we go. I like to make sure these look nice and clean. So I'm just going to kind of touch them up. 
and the flux we used is actually very corrosive so I'm gonna grab my 99% isopropyl alcohol and we're going to clean the points with a little q-tip to make sure that there's no corrosion in the future or any damaged PCBs motherboards we don't want anything like that speaking of PCBs did you know you can get your own printed with today's sponsor PCB way that's right with their quick order services all you have to do is upload the Gerbers for any PCB board and they'll get them shipped to you quickly and affordably I've used them for all of my hardware projects so far and the quality is fantastic as is their service they also offer board assembly, 3D printing and CNC, making them a one-stop shop for all of your prototyping and manufacturing needs. Go check them out at PCBWay.com So, I'm just spraying a tiny bit of isopropyl alcohol on the motherboard. And I'm also going to wet a Q-tip and just come in and rub it down like this until all the black stuff is gone. We only want the metal, so you can see here it's already coming away. All that black stuff. And it shouldn't feel sticky. What you can do, I found this better, is you can hold the Q-tip really towards the end, right at the tip, and then you get a bit more friction and pressure on it to just scrub them down. So there we go, those look nice and clean. So now I'm gonna use the dry end and just clean up a bit of the IPA. You can also just blow on this and it will kind of evaporate. IPA is very quick to kind of dissolve itself. And I also like to use a little brush just to make sure the last kind of remainder parts are removed. So now reassemble the console, screw it all back together. We're not gonna to have to open it again. And yeah, we'll, we'll see you over on the console. Okay, so with the console fully assembled, what we can do is once again, pull up that picture or screenshot of the reset code full sequence. We're going to go over to system, console settings, and then all the way down to system info. And then quite quickly, we want to put that in. So mine is left, right, X, Y, L, B, left, left, down, X. And then we're going to get this here, reset system settings. So then we want to click yes on this. So the console is going to reboot. You're going to see the boot logo again. And when we go over to family settings, you'll see that it is just simply removed and gone. So we need to set up the console again. We're just going to skip the network stuff for now. So go play. We're going to select to go to the home menu and then go over to settings, go down to family. And you can see here content controls are off so this console is completely unlocked it is no longer parental locked or restricted and that is the whole process thanks for watching if this video was helpful leave a like subscribe and leave me a comment if you did this on your console so that's it for this video and see you next time